Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I have produced a Super Venture Star with RS-25s, as you can see. Uh, people had commented on the Venture Star videos, maybe we should use RS-25s, and that was a thing to do, obviously, I have done so. But mainly I wanted a Venture Star that carried more. A uh, 20-ton payload to orbit just doesn't do it for me. I need more than that. And so I have enlarged Venture Star. It's not exactly the same body. I made a new model, and this new model has significant differences. And it is shaped around four external tanks from the Space Shuttle program. And so that determined the size of the body. And uh, perhaps if I can get Blender over here. Uh, here is the model in Blender. And in fact, uh, we could go into the transparent mode here and we can see the wireframe mode and we can see four external tanks. I literally modeled the external tanks, well, the general shape of them and put them in. So I know this body can fit those things. Uh, so yeah, that, and you can see the sort of container for the cargo bay. That's the cargo bay area. We have room to spare for whatever other bits you would care to have. Everything else is sort of placed properly, including the RCS ports and all that business. And it is big, as you might expect from something that has four external tanks in there. So in fitting the four external tanks in, it wasn't my intention that it literally would have those four tanks inside. That's so, sort of a waste of space. But just to verify that it is the right physical size and also uh, that we could have the right mass. Uh, with the four external tanks, the uh, external tank for the space shuttle program was about 30 tons or so. If you have four, that's uh, 120 tons. The body here is much more than that. Uh, the body dry is 215 tons dry. Actually, the dry mass of this with the engines and the wings and landing gear is 386 tons, uh, but that's also with uh, cargo. And that cargo is a 45 ton tank right now. So our goal is 45 tons to low Earth orbit instead of the 20 tons that uh, Venture Star normally has. I've got a little bit of a um, issue. I, I forgot to solidify the right cargo bay door so it's transparent right now. Uh, well, transparent from this side anyway, so sorry about that. I'll be fixing that later on, but first we can still test without that fix. And we've got larger wings uh, for more, mm, well, aerodynamics. I do not have the body flaps in yet. We'll add those if necessary. We're not going to test re-entry yet. We're just going to test capacity in this video. And I'm just introducing the concept, which is, well, let, let's bring Venture Star out. There we go. That was Venture Star. <laughs> and this is Super Venture Star with 8.4 meter height here in the body. Uh, the height there is actually fairly large. It's sort of bulbous. This one is a little bit flatter in its aspect. And who knows about the aerodynamic implications. Maybe it shouldn't have been like that in the first place, but you get the picture. This one is huge. It's three times the mass and it's heavier than SLS. Mind you, uh, this is with hydrogen and oxygen. SLS, of course, most of the mass is the SRBs. So this is big and uh, it has if, if it had stages it could carry quite a lot but it is an SSTO so it has to be big just to get the 45 tons into orbit I don't even know about landing this sort of thing we put the landing gear but uh, the height here is 80 meters the length which is this direction here is 86.4 meters yeah anyway with all that said, 3,307 tons, we will take it out to the launch pad and see if it works. Well, um, it's sort of not quite on the launch pad at all. Yeah. And I hope that Delta V reading is wrong. But, um, let me see. That might be part of the... Oh, yeah, I think it had the glitch with the with the MLI layers. Let me put fewer MLI layers to avoid that glitch. I don't know if we can... Uh, I've only got 20 MLI layers here. But... 
Let's try 10. Instantly, the old mess engines at this point are, are uh, basically the Vinci engines from the European Space Agency. I copied the stats. Nope, it's still got that. Uh, maybe I can't do MLI layers, I'm not sure. Okay, well, we have no MLI layers, so that's a bit of a problem. But we'll figure that out later. First of all, SAS on. No. Throttle up, and ignition. And launch. And here we go. 24 RS-25s, folks. Well, we're bringing them back in theory. Right? So it's okay. And you know, mass production, probably that'll make it cheaper. But this is what it takes to get an SSTO that has the same capacity to orbit as the Orion carrier plane plus the recoverable methane oxygen upper stage that it has. Basically the same capacity. That system is about half the mass because staging, right? Staging helps! SSTOs without their staging make things a little bit more complicated. I think I forgot to put the shininess on the wing pieces. They're supposed to be shiny metallic tiles as well, which is what Venture Star had. Scaling up does have the benefit that the mass, the dry mass, scales by the square to some extent. It's a little bit more than the square. But you get an uh, increase in the volume by the cube. Now, that assumes that you're not going to have any structural problems, but in this case, we sort of verified that by having it have the same height as the external tanks, right? So we know they, they sort of have the frames and all that business. SLS just flew, so we know that 8.4 meters works. 8.4 meters works. Of course, we're gonna have to have a whole thrust frame for this business, but that should be doable. As far as the launch thrust, it's not that much more than what SLS actually handles, so. We will throttle down at this point, as our G forces will get quite high. I'll even roll it around here. Sort of a mean looking thing up front. The lack of windows sort of does that. Uh, this might be lopsided. Okay, well, we've got sort of a lopsided orbit, but we are in orbit. Hard to. Co we could just shut down some engines. We should have just shut down some engines. Didn't have an action group for that. Okay, so 45 ton payload seems to work out. Uh, we need the RCS. Let's see that the RCS works. Uh, RCS on, of course. Obviously, this RCS is more powerful than the RCS on the Venture Star model I had, but only so much as is necessary. Okay. And then we'd have 217 meters per second for the return. We've got a pretty high apoapsis, but I'm not going to test that right now. I think we should probably optimize the trajectory with this, but we can verify that I can get the 45 tons to orbit. And that is the idea. Um, whether it's a good idea or not uh, remains to be seen. We, we can't check the center of lift right now, but I know that the center of lift and center of mass are very close together. I had already checked that in the SPH. So, yeah. Have I gone too far? <laughs> have I gone too far? For a mere 45 ton payload, we have 24 RS-25s. Hmm. Anyway, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.